Hi, I'm Catherine reporting for Kids First, and today I have the opportunity to speak with the Academy Award nominated filmmaker Richard Linklater. Richard is a self-taught writer, director, and producer. He is well known for his films Boyhood, Dazed, and Confused, uh, School of Rock, and Slacker, along with many, many more. Hi, Mr. Linklater. Welcome to the show. Hey, how are you doing? Good to be here. I'm good. How are you? I'm at NASA. Look over my shoulder. That's an actual- Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, we're having a screening tonight. That's That suit's been on the moon. Nice. <laughs> so in previous interviews, you've mentioned that you knew that you just had to make this movie. So when did you first realize this? And what, like, what was, like, what was there, like, a, a cataclysm? Hmm. Well, I thought of this movie live action for a long time, but then I just, once I started thinking of it animated, it really started working in my mind. And this is, you know, 16 years ago or so, you know, it's, it's a while back, 16, 17 years. So I spent many years thinking about it, what it should be, what it shouldn't be. But it was really just a moment in my own childhood. You know, I'm old enough to, I was in second grade when we walked on the moon the first time. So I was thinking back like, oh, that'd be an interesting movie to kind of capture that what was in the air at that moment, both personally and culturally, and kind of this, this kid fantasy too that was I had had. So it was pretty magical to kind of spin all those things together in one movie. Try to tell Exactly. Them. Yeah. Yeah, so you've, you've just kind of known your whole life, like, oh, I think I should make this movie. No, it hit me, you know, somewhere along the way. You don't really appreciate it. You know, sometimes it takes a lot of time to really process your own life and go, it was like, oh, that was an interesting time culturally, you know, because history sort of shakes out things. You know, some things get more important, some things go away. Some things you think are really important turn out not to be. Some trivial things you didn't pay much attention to become big things in world history. And I guess I felt that about um, the Apollo program and walking on the moon. When I was a kid, it was just the next thing we were doing. It was so obvious. Oh, we're walking on the moon, then we're going to go to Mars and we're going to, you know, Jupiter and you know all that and you realize oh all those other things haven't really happened yet and decades are going by it's like oh that was an apex that was the the top of the heap so to yeah. me it felt like oh that that's worthy of a of a depiction from a kid's point of view about just what it was like because I mean there's only you know there's only 12 people ever walked on the moon but like mm -hmm. hundreds and you know 600 million people watched it on tv so there weren't enough depictions of it just what life was like just to be a citizen and particularly to be a kid at that time. I thought uh, that's a big enough deal to warrant that kind of scrutiny. Yeah. And you've also, you just mentioned this a uh, little while back that you originally thought that it was going to be a live action movie, but then you kind of changed it to animation. So what led you to change it? Was there any point where you filming and you just thought like, oh, this isn't right? Or was it before, like when you were writing? The film you're making in your head for the years leading up to actually making it. And it's got to work there at a conceptual level. And it just wasn't really working live action. I think because of the blend of fantasy and reality, it still felt like, like it was kind of engaging the critical mind rather than the more fantastical creative fantasy mind so it i had to once it was animated that's when i knew it would work so i think you got to give yourself time to figure things out you know like what what will allow some especially when you're trying to do something different you haven't necessarily seen before you got to kind of give it time to take the shape and become what it what it wants to be effectively but you're always working on it. So there was a lot of research to do, a lot of, uh, I don't know, just a lot of thinking went into it, you know? Yeah, and I think that changing it to animation was definitely a great choice because I feel like it was more engaging for sure. Yeah, I, I think so. And there's something kind of fun about animation just in its, in its texture, just in its existence. It feels to me, I'm always kind of, you know, I, I'm, enlivened a little bit it feels like you know for me it'll always be saturday morning cartoons and it'll have this kind of youthful vibe even if the film's not necessarily a kids movie it kind of gives a certain buoyancy that i thought was good for the movie kind of its optimistic fun tone that the real world can kind of challenge so i just thought oh animation all the better all the better that it you know mm -hmm. it, it works you know 
Yeah. And you also mentioned that I think you were in second grade when you first like mm -hmm. watched the uh, lunar landing. So was there like, it's, this movie is basically like a love letter to your childhood. And so were there any like specific memories or maybe some people from your childhood that you knew that you had to include or you wanted to include? Oh gosh, I, I, this is everything. This is, this is my full download of that era from my own life, from everything around me. So much of it is pulled out of my own life because I was kind of going, it's such an unextraordinary, typical arrangement, you know, just the family, um, you know, living out in the suburbs, you know, what could be more normal than that? But to get into those details, you know, and then to contrast it with something so grandiose, like the actual, you know, moon landing, that that seemed like a fun marriage to to be had but no it's very personal i describe it as embarrassingly personal but you know i i often work from that spot it's a good jumping off place because you you're i was trying to recreate an exact history but i was also trying to recreate you know elements of my own life and recreate this fantasy i'd had so trying to make all that work together so Mm -hmm. And I definitely think the fact that you like experienced it and it was part of your childhood made it all the more relatable. <laughs> and so I found like the specifics, if you're just totally honest about something, even if someone doesn't get the reference point, they feel that it's real because it was real to somebody. And that's what we do as storytellers. We're conveying, that's what actors do. They act and you go, oh, that must be a real feeling or a real situation because I'm, it seems real to them. Yeah. So that's what we're sharing as storytellers. But, you know, that's the trick to, to relay some kind of reality. You know? Definitely. Yeah. And so you were a director, writer and producer. So many roles. I feel like that's definitely a lot of responsibility. So what was your typical day like at, or as you worked on this film? Well, it depends on what stage you're in, you know, after years of thinking about it, you know, when you're writing it, that can be pretty lonely, you know, you're alone. But then once you're shooting, you know, you've cast it, you've got a crew around. That's when it gets really fun. You're rehearsing, you're shooting. In this case, we were shooting on a in a studio with a green screen because we're just shooting the actors. Everything else in the movie is created in animation. We're, we're dropping the actors into animated, an animated world that we're creating separately so i mean that's a fun time but that was about only about 20 days of, of shooting and then you know we edit so really that's just myself an editor my editor i'm working with and a, a few assistants we're working on you know music and narration and all that and then here comes the the 20 months of animation and suddenly there's 150 animators from all over the world working on the movie and that becomes kind of a communication challenge, you know, just to, to com communicate directly exactly what's working, what isn't working. And, you know, so that every, every step of the, I mentioned like four steps here because they're all completely important and, and have their own challenges, you know, their own, you know, parts that feel very hard to pull off and parts that, you know, but it, they're all important. So just land in a different phase and you have to maximize your your potential in that phase so but you you want to work with great people and people you know in my case people i've worked with before i trust we have a shorthand we work out problems so much of filmmaking is problem solving so yeah and so you previously worked with Jack Black in School of Rock and in Bernie. So did this history with him at all like influence you choosing him to play the voice of older Stan? Yeah, well, first off, it's just a joy to work with Jack anytime I can. But I know that his mom had been a, an engineer at NASA at this very time. So um, I knew it. his family was proud of her you know, contributions, everybody worked at in the Apollo program to this day, you know, very proud of what they worked on. You know, why wouldn't they be? It's an incredible achievement, the greatest ever. So I know that loomed large in Jack's family's history. And uh, he was a little kid. He, he wasn't, he was born just after the moon landing. So I think it was fun for him personally to go back to this era that had meant a lot to his mom. 
and you know kind of explore it and you know bring his jack blackness to it which is always fun yeah and i feel like yeah i didn't actually know that his mom worked for yeah. yes i feel like that's very cool <laughs> yeah she's like he said he definitely did not inherit her engineering brain but she was <laughs> at the top of the heap you know like yeah. you know, how did they do that it's people like jack's mom who are the people who make all this stuff work you know <laughs> that's unbelievable yeah. how, how gifted and smart you know some people are in this world thankfully mm -hmm. well that's all the time we have so thank you so much for talking with me yeah really nice talking to you yeah okay well i'm wishing you all the best and everything thank you okay good talking to you this is apollo 10 app.